Good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. My name is John Roaming. I am going to be presenting The Valley of Shadow of Death by Roger Fenton that took place in 1855. This is Roger Fenton. Roger Fenton was a British photographer. He graduated from the University College London with an arts degree and then pursued an interest in photography. He even co-founded the Royal Photographic Society. Fenton was known for landscapes and portraits of the royal family. He became an influential photographer and was commissioned to document the Crimean War by Queen Victoria and Prince Albert. As a proper English gentleman, he wouldn't photograph the corpse of soldiers because doing so was unseemly. The Crimean War was fought by an alliance of Britain, France, Turkey, and Sardinia against Russia. This is all taking place in modern-day Ukraine. Basically, Russia was trying to expand into Turkish land. The British and French joined in the fight because they feared that if Russia won, they would continue to push westward into their territories. So, at the end of this war, about a half a million people died. It was one of the first major wars. Fenton traveled in a photo truck that doubled as his darkroom, and he traveled with his assistant William as well. The Valley of Shadow of Death, 1855. A black and white salted pepper print of an abandoned dirt road cutting through the landscape between two hills with nothing living on either side. Upon further viewing, the viewer is able to notice that the rocks are not really rocks but cannonballs. The interesting angles of the landscape, along with the road and empty sky, makes this picture feel heavy. The weight of war is prevalent in this photo. The title of the photo was not only taken from Psalm 23, but the soldiers also referred to this valley as the shadow of death in their letters home. There is no doubt that this title helped with gaining its popularity. I feel that the intended interpretation of this photo is to show the dangers of war along with the solitude of war. The road was a wasteland of death, and the photo shows no death, only the idea of death through the cannonballs that were everywhere. This is the valley where soldiers came to die, yet it's free of bodies and instead shows the amount of fire firepower this section of the war took. The cannonballs can easily represent human life, left unattended unidentified, alone, and possibly in a ditch. Showing death without bodies is why this is a powerful image. Was this photo staged? A lot of people think so, and we're going to get into it. In the book, The Ultimate Spectacle, A Visual History of the Crimean War by Ulrich Keller, Keller declares that there are two photos taken by Fenton at the same location at the same time on the same date, but one of them is staged. There was no problem with this being staged during Fenton's life. It didn't matter. It wasn't a big deal. He knew he took two photos. He told his wife he took two photos. There are letters home saying he took two photos. Nobody had a problem with it. Keller comes along and notices that there are two photos and decides one of them is staged and one of them is not staged. These are the two photos. The first one on the left is the Valley of Shadow of Death. The second one is the Shadow of Death with no cannonballs on the road. Keller declares that the one on the right, the one with no cannonballs, is the first photograph. And the cannonballs on the left is the second. He has no real good proof of this except for it's obvious, which means it's not obvious to anybody. So another person, Errol Morris, goes into a detailed research to find out which one of these photos came first. There are two theories on what happened. On the left hand side, the Valley of Shadow of Death, the theory is Fenton came up, saw this field, saw the road full of cannonballs, took the photo. Then, after the photo was taken, 
his assistant and two soldiers that was accompanying him on this journey went out and gathered the cannonballs cleared the road and used some of those cannonballs and brought them back to base so they could reuse the cannonballs in the fighting later the second theory is that on the one on the right the second theory is that Fenton came upon this road saw it empty took the photograph then the soldiers and his assistant gathered cannonballs threw them out onto the road to make it look more dangerous to make it look like there was something really happening those are the two theories Keller believed that the one on the right that Bandon Road was the first one a lot of other people assumed that the one on the left was the first one but again thanks to Mr. Errol Morris he did his research and found that this photograph the one with no cannonballs on the road is the first photograph of the series he concluded this by doing the research and looking and looking and looking at this photograph and having friends look at it and other experts look at it and on the left hand side inside that circle there are a group of five rocks and those five rocks are higher than they are in the next photo with the cannonballs on the road and because they are higher means they probably get the picture taken first then the soldiers came up there they were moving cannonballs they were grabbing cannonballs they probably slid moved to five rocks lower than the second picture so in the second picture those rocks in that area are lower I cannot see the movement I have tried I have looked I cannot see them I am just trusting Mr. Morris to do the research correctly so this is not only one of the first and most popular photos of war, but it's also a staged photo of war created for dramatic effect. Fenton wanted to appear dangerous. He wanted you to feel like he was out in the field, that he was battling these battles, and that he was also in constant danger. And throwing the cannonballs on the road would do that. Now, there are going to be arguments about is it staged is it not staged does it matter and at the end of the day Fenton's job was to go out and document the war and he did it he took over 350 pictures of that war he took those photographs brought them back to London and had an exhibition people for the first time were able to see war through photographs if you go on Google and search Crimean War you are gonna see Fenton's photographs and you're going to see paintings of war you're going to see paintings of people on battles on horses shooting firing guns you're going to see the whole scene but Fenton went out and took the photos that was his job that's what makes this powerful that's what makes this picture important it was the first time people were able to look and physically see war they didn't have that before and with that said it really doesn't matter if it was staged or not staged because his job again was to document war this photo was more powerful than a painting and it changed the way people saw war thank you these are my references